Hey tube heads, how's it going? Frankie Fix here. And look at this cute little guy we got for 30 bucks on Marketplace. SX5200 Snapper. Now this is the original Snapper. Uh, a high quality commercial grade snowblower. Um, it is a two cycle engine. Five horsepower, 20 inches wide. Um, this would have probably cost around seven hundred dollars in the nineties was nineteen ninety seven ninety eight uh... it has a tecumseh engine which is a solid engine if you take care of it uh... we acquired it for thirty bucks there are some things that we need to address with it that i think maybe be interesting having a video on it because i only saw a few videos and basically people doing shorts of them just using it for 20 seconds in the driveway and that was about it but this is a snapper made by the original snapper company solid metal uh, it was bought out by Briggs and Stratton eventually I think in the 2000s early 2000s and so uh, what they do is just put the snapper name on the equipment they make so it's not the quality that this machine is uh, this would have been sold only at dealerships it was made in by American workers in Georgia. Uh, you wouldn't go to Walmart or any big box store. In fact, there was some article about Walmart wanting to have Snapper sell their products at Walmart, and they didn't want to do no it. No way. Whatever deal fell through, they just didn't want to do it. So it's a solid machine. We're going to go through. This will be the only video on YouTube it's going to be this in depth with this machine so if you have one or you see one on marketplace uh, the video might help you out so we're going to dig into the details of it um, so stick around and let's get into it So this machine must have been sold at this dealership, Weingarts, in Michigan, which is pretty incredible of how it ended up here in Buffalo. But it's at home now, and we're going to put it to the test in probably about four months. Alright, so here's the model number tag on the side, and you can see it was made at the Georgia factory, made in USA. So looking where you would be facing when you're blowing snow, you have the primer bulb, which is kind of loose here. We're going to have to figure out how we can affix that a little bit better. We have a key, actual metal key. Uh, that's just to turn the machine on. It's not a starter. It doesn't start it. It just uh, This is a kill switch, basically. Pull start. The E model, 5200E, would have a electric start module here. That's what these holes are for. And that's what this slot is for here by the gas cap. Because the cable from the starter would go down to the starter on the engine. Uh, right here we have a choke pull out. And uh, that pretty much covers the rear of the machine. So also at the rear of the machine we have the chute control nothing special about that but it is a solid solidly built rod here and there's a worm gear which is also metal and the base of the chute uh, that comes in contact with uh, the chute is metal and you can notice the very tall chute on these machines now the wheels here are a hard rubber and of course the wheels are plastic here the rim and they appear to be in excellent condition. On the left side of the machine we have the belt cover which is a hard plastic and that's where the cable runs through to attach to the tensioner. I've already taken off a few bolts but that's one of the first things that we're going to look at is the condition of the belt. Okay so first we'll remove this belt cover and I'll act like I didn't open it before like a lot of YouTubers and all the screws come off right away and I'll act surprised. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to use an 8 millimeter and take out, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
seven, eight, nine, or something like that. There's a lot of them. We're going to take it off. Now this is where the cable runs through uh, for the handle. We've got one more here. Wow. And here you'll see the shaft from the engine. We have a tensioner pulley here. And we have the main pulley that's connected to the auger that spins the auger. So I'm going to remove the cable. It just clips in like that. It's kind of like a Z connection there. We'll remove that. Now to get this belt off, what I think the easiest way to do, because I already did it, is to remove this pulley. And I've seen people on YouTube, they got a 2x4 in there, they're trying to pound this, when they probably don't realize that there's a way to get it off from the center here. So that's what we're going to do. Since I have to use the crescent wrench and turn that pulley for the auger to the right to loosen it, we're going to have to stick something in here to lodge it so it doesn't move. So let's do that right now. Now we're going to get a look at this belt, and I'm going to act like this was clean before, and that I didn't previously clean it all. But you can see the belt split and cracked, and there's no question I'm going to have to order another one. So now, who is going to interrupt my video? There's someone at the door. Hold on a minute. Wow, that's impossible. How'd they deliver that so fast? All right, so here we have the tensioner pulley, and this is pulled by the handle, and the belt should be loose. This should turn freely, and you can see the tensioner. Now, I would go in here and put a little 3-in-1 oil, just a little bit. Don't want to get crazy with oil in here, because it's going to get on the belt. But let's look at one of the reasons why there was a lot of debris and the belt was basically destroyed. I'm going to show you the reason for that and you're probably not going to believe uh, what you're about to see. Yes, what you're seeing is real. This is not fake. You can see the cable here for the handle is actually run in between the handle here and the mounting bracket. Wow! So in order for that to even function this would have to be loose, which it was. And I didn't pay any attention when he had started it. But this cable is frayed in this area. It's only the outside layer of the cable. But there's no way this would function properly this way. It needs to be outside the handle and free. And that's probably why the belt was shredded. Because if this wire, when you pull it, doesn't return back because there is a spring it's going to stay in that position it's going to enable the tensioner on the belt and so either you're going to have the auger spinning all the time or you're going to have that belt slipping constantly on those uh, pulleys so we're going to fix that right now So our next discovered issue was this bracket here. There was some kind of zip tie and this wasn't hooked up properly. 
And I could probably understand that because it took me about 15 minutes to figure out how this thing gets mounted here. But you can see there's a little barrel connector at the end and this handle goes through this bracket here and then into the hole on the handle. And this acts as a stopper here and you would lift up like this. So we fixed that issue. Also I'm changing the format of my channel from being straightforward and timid to sarcastic and condescending. Okay so we have our new belt and this is 3 8 width V-belt because it curves on the other side of it. That's what fits into the pulley. 3 8 wide, 33 inches long. And what I like to do first is just take a little silicone or whatever, not a lot, just on a napkin, paper towel, and just rub it on the back side of the belt. Not on the front side of the belt because it's going to slip. But this, what this will help it do is ride along these belt guides a little bit easier. So we're going to put this side in here. You can see the belt guide, and when you engage that, the back side of the belt's rubbing up against these belt guides and over time it wears off so that helps it slip a little better. So we put that in. And I'm going to go ahead and put my pulley on. And I'm just going to start the pulley. I'm not going to fully put it on. I'm going to just start it and I'm going to pull back this tensioner going to turn to the left. The crankshaft moves to the left so you don't have to tighten this like a crazy person. Just tighten it enough because as it's engaged it's actually tightening as you're using it. So we're going to put it on enough so we can slip this belt on. And it's a good thing to get back there and lubricate it. That's what I did. I just lubricated it. This one's going to go underneath. So you've got this one going over that belt guide. This one's below the belt guide. you got it going around here, which I lubricated this. It's a sealed bearing, so you really can't do much, but you can lubricate the outsides of it where the bolt is. Now I'm just going to Tighten this down, take the tensioner off, and just with my fingers I'm just going to turn it. Then I'm going to change the position of the uh, 2x4 so that I have leverage and I'm going to tighten this. Alright, so I'm just going to tighten this. Like I said, you don't have to get crazy with it because the rotation is such that it's running in a tightening position. So you don't have to worry about it flying off of there. So that's good enough there. I'm going to try the tensioner. We hook it up right in this hole this way. It's like a Z connector at the end. But we first have to put it through this cover. You can see a hole there. We're going to put it through this cover first. Then we can put it through the hole this way. And we'll try the tensioner. What should happen here is you have the crankshaft here. When the auger is not engaged, this should spin, but the 
wheel shouldn't spin here, the pulley, and the belt shouldn't turn. So what I'm going to do is just pull the, the machine is on the off position, I'm going to pull this uh, starter cord, and you can see the crankshaft is turning, but the pulley and the belt is not. So that's the way you want that. There's fine adjustment on the cable, so I can seal this up because I'm not worried about uh, the tension. I think it's good and I can always adjust it through the tensioner on the cable. So I'm going to put this cover back on because we're, we're done installing the uh, belt. And it's that simple. And this is going to apply to many of these two-stage machines that have a cover on the side. They all work the same. They're going to have a pulley, a tensioner, and they're going to have a belt coming off of the crankshaft. So just keep that in mind. Alright, so we're done with that part. We're going to start putting these 8 millimeter screws back in all around. Okay, so now we're going to remove this top cover, get a look at the engine in here. First we're going to have to remove the gas cap. And there is, I noticed, two screws missing. There's one on this side, 8mm, one on the other on the bottom. But there are a total of six, 8mm. Uh, so we're going to take them out of here. See if there's anything else we need to look at. There's the engine. Wow, there's something else in there too. Well, there seems to be some grass build up in here. I don't know how that would happen. I mean, you're not mowing the grass with this. So what that tells me is something was living in here. Could be still in here. I don't know what it could be. I mean, this is a snapper. Maybe it's snapping turtles or something. soaked with oil. It's disgusting. I don't see any critters. That's dirty. That's filthy. It's like, I'm, it's like I'm reaching into a garbage can. And there is some oil here, so I'm not sure what was going on there. But we're going to have to... I don't know if they didn't mix the oil right, or there's a leak somewhere. We're going to have to look into that. I'm going to continue cleaning this out, get some paper towels, wipe it all out, and then we'll uh, get on to, I would imagine I'm going to rinse it. Then we can take a closer look at the engine. We're going to take this bottom cover off and expose the engine a little more. We'll check the gas, see what's going on there. And uh, yeah, so stick around. Look, I found a couple screws and a quarter. So I did find so far a couple bolts, a washer and a quarter. It's kind of odd. I don't know where those two bolts go to, 
but I'm going to start removing these bolts here so I can take this back panel off. You can get access to the carburetor here, but we're going to remove the whole panel so it's not going to matter. because We're going to need to clean it up and we can get a look at the back side of this engine. I'm just going to start taking these out. And this is 7 16 1, 2, 3, 4 on the bottom. And then you're going to have uh, what looks to be a 3 8 along the back here. So I'm going to not bore you with this. Remove these and we'll get a look at what, uh, if there's any more debris we got to clean out of there. All right, so what I'm seeing here is some neglect, for sure. I mean, there was a bunch of grass in here, oil. Um, there's a bolt missing here where it mounts the engine to the body. Uh, there's a bolt missing on the chute, a couple bolts. Overall, probably about five screws and bolts that are missing. And I have a collection, that's not a big deal. But what I am looking at is the oil. I cleaned up a lot of the oil in here. It was just oily everywhere. And what I'm thinking is I didn't see a lot of oil on the outside. There was some oil on the outside, but the majority is here on the inside of the machine. So I believe it's coming from this gasket here. So what I can do, I have gasket material. I'd be able to make another gasket for it, but we'd have to remove this bottom part of the engine and we'd also have to remove the pulley on the left. So I think what I'm going to do is just soak this pulley shaft with some penetrating oil overnight and see if I can't remove that pulley for the belt. And then we can take the engine out and get a look inside of this uh, the crankcase there. Because uh, there shouldn't be that much oil. Now I'm looking at the gas filter and it, I don't see any coloration on it which means that either this machine was maybe found and he just threw gas in it to, to start it for me because it, there should be some color there to indicate there's some oil mixed in with it and I don't see that uh, so we're gonna have to investigate that too first thing I'm gonna do is take this gas line off the carburetor and let the gas drain into this jar here. We'll get a look at it. There should be some coloration to it, meaning it was mixed with some two-cycle oil. Because if it wasn't, that means it was run. I mean, it shouldn't be run at all without two-cycle oil in the gas. You have to mix it with these engines. Um, I don't know if it was just filled up with regular gas to start it, like I said, or how long were they running this without the oil in it that's a question too but seeing the oil here tells me that at some point someone was running it with, with oil in it um, so I'm just going to remove this here we just have to investigate a little bit more that's the thing with the marketplace buys is you don't know what anyone's done to it it looks like someone was in here it did run and it sounded good but you know it's definitely not a blown engine it's just the issue here is we've got a leak here somewhere. It could be a crack somewhere. It could be worse than what I think it is. But we're not going to know that yet until I dig into it. So I'm just going to turn this gas line back and forth instead of just yanking it out. That way we know it's free. I'm going to pull it out of the carburetor and try to get it into this jar as quick as possible. that gas out of the tank take a look at it I mean it's slightly green or is that yellow it's got a slightly green color to it it's really hard to tell I mean if this there's two cycle in here or not but that's okay we're gonna just drain it anyway and we're gonna mix our own I would do that anyway I mean 
just like you would change the oil in a snow blower if it had a separate oil um, section to it. This one doesn't. You mix it with the gas. So let's continue. So we've been doing some cleaning in here. We cleaned off all the oil. You know, I would have taken the engine out anyway to touch up in here, clean it all up. That way you know what's wrong with it later. If you see a leak of oil, you know where it's coming from. But when it's all full of grass and there's oil everywhere, it's impossible to see where it's coming from. But I could see mainly it's around this bottom area that I see the oil. So I think the best way is to remove the engine anyway. Now as far as the pull cord, it had a little tear towards the top. It was w more worn at the top. There was a section here. So I just cut an inch off of it and uh, tied a knot in it because the rest of the cable is fine. The rope is in good shape there. Uh, as far as the pulley, we're going to get a look at that. And what I did was soak it for a number of hours and just pried it up and that came right off. So we're going to take a look at that now. Alright, so here's the pulley and there's just going to be a bolt here. I think it's a half inch. There's a couple washers. We removed those. And then all I basically did was after putting the penetrating fluid on, I put a 2x4 here and basically just went around on the bottom here in a circular fashion and it came right out. So there's the pulley from the shaft here and there is a key in there so you got to be careful of that. So there's your pulley and I'll, I'll clean that up as well on the wire wheel. Um, but at least that's off. We'll be able to get the engine off now. Now there are some half inch bolts on the top here, four of them. There's one behind the wheel so I think we can use an open end wrench to get that one off. And then there's just another bolt on the housing holding the engine on. And there was one missing. So someone's been in here before. But again, it's an old machine. You don't know the history of it. So that's why I like to start a clean slate, go through everything. And then I know what's going on. I can create a service record for it. So that's the pulley wasn't that hard getting off and let's get to the next step Okay, so what I'm going to need to do is with a half inch socket, I'm going to have to remove these four bolts here to remove this cover. Guys, does it look more professional if I wear black nitrile gloves? Could be a little oily, so we're going to have to... I put this tray here. Shouldn't be too much oil though, because like it's not like a traditional engine where it has a, like a four cycle where it's going to have a separate oil sump. This is just the oil that's mixed with the gas because it is a two cycle engine. Kind of like an, an old dirt bike engine. These two bolts are definitely shorter near the flywheel. Shorter ones. If 
I'm just going to take a screwdriver and just carefully try to pry this off of here. I don't want to be too crazy with it. Probably going to end up pulling the whole piston out of here is what it looks like. I really just wanted to get this bottom piece off of here. You can see inside of there. You can see the connecting rod here. Just want, I don't want to take this whole thing out of here. I don't know if that's possible. I don't want to damage this uh, seal here. There you have it. Here you have the connecting rod. You got your seals. I think we're just going to leave it just like that. We're going to have to get some sealant on here. So I'm waiting for that. The sealant's going to come tomorrow. So in the meantime, I'm going to clean this cover all up, degrease it. Well, I do see some cracks, some little cracks on the outside here. I don't know if you can see them. Here, there's some cracks. But thankfully, they're not on the inside. So I'm thinking maybe using some JB Weld or something just to cover them up. Now, I could use a rod with the you know solder it's not solder but it's like a brazing rod with a torch but I don't know if I want to heat this thing up and cause it to expand and make and crack it worse but I'm just glad it's not cracked on the inside so it still looks good I think we just got to clean this up okay let's get a good look at this seal here I might try to get some numbers off of here but the seal looks okay you have the seal here. We have like a washer, but then we have some bearings, which the bearings look good. So that's good news. I'm just going to put this back. We'll put that back into place there. And now I'll clean this up, clean the surface up, and get ready to put the, uh, now what I'm going to use here on here is Moto Bond, because it is gasoline resistant. Uh, it's from Permatex. Moto Bond, we're going to use that. And that should take care of the oil leak that's coming out of here. Okay, so here we have this 
two cycle HSK850 Tecumseh. We've checked out everything inside looks good and what we're going to do here is we're going to use this Moto Seal which is a fuel resistant gasket maker and here's the package here it has a picture of a motorcycle, a chainsaw, it's resistant to all automotive fuels and it's ideal for case halves so it's made for these type of engines so what we need to do is put a thin layer around this casing and put the casing back on because here's where we had our oil leak now at the factory many many years ago I think they used uh, Loctite 515 so what I had originally done and there wasn't much on it it's probably most of that deteriorated over the years and that's why we had the oil leak but I basically just took a razor blade and lightly you don't want the razor blade digging into the aluminum but kind of at an angle and they do make plastic razor blades for this but I've always used the uh, regular razor blade and cleaned it all up all the way around and what we have here is some mineral spirits and I just like putting it in a tuna can so I don't dip into this and contaminate it because I use that for painting as well that's the clean strip that's what I'm using and then we have a nice clean piece of a t-shirt so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around and clean this up real good make sure there's no oil or anything on it well, this I already soaked in uh, simple green and washed it several times so it's good but I'm still gonna go over it and then we're just gonna apply a thin layer of the uh, gasket maker and seal it back up all right so I'm going to open up my moto seal here and on the cap there's a little poker you just want to poke it into here Open it up there. You do want to have it well ventilated area when you're doing this. It kind of smells like uh, I don't know, almost like super glue or something. But from what I read on this uh, back of this carton, there's a lot of chemicals in here. Flammable liquid and vapor, harmful if inhaled, causes skin irritation, serious eye irritation, may cause cancer. There's like uh, ethyl benzene in here, titanium dioxide, carbon tetrachloride, all kinds of nasty stuff in there. So I'm going to wear a glove. And I don't want to get crazy here because when you put this cover on, and tighten the bolt it's going to squeeze out so whatever squeezing out takes place on the outside is going to happen inside and with the two cycle you don't want that in the engine you don't want it in any engine so you don't have to get crazy with this stuff I'm going to apply it to the cover itself and then I'll just smooth it out with my finger and I'm just going flat with it just flat going around the bolt holes we can smooth it out with our finger after we apply the uh, initial layer here but you know this is machined aluminum so it's this is just to fill in any imperfections so you don't have to lay it on real thick I suspect that the Loctite 515 and I'll show it here from the manual you can see it uh, tells you to put the Loctite 515 on it I think this is going to do just fine 
then we're going to set it up and it should take 24 hours to cure that's what we have and I'm just going to go around and lightly just smooth it out and try to get any that's kind of leaning towards the inside away from the inside with this engine it would end up any pieces would end up in the in the mix with the air fuel mixture I think that's pretty good we got we got it all covered here we got all areas covered So now we're going to go ahead and put it on here, and that's what we'll do next. looks good. We'll wipe off any excess on the outside. And we'll go ahead and put the bolts in here. I'm going to tighten them in a diagonal fashion. Just doing them snug. You would want to use some kind of torque wrench if you have one. If not, just use common sense. It's aluminum. You know, you don't want to over tighten it. That should do it. You'll see a little seeping out of the sides. It's not a big deal. I put a thin layer so you're not going to get it piling out of there. You just That's normal. You just want to make sure you use the right Permatex for the job. There's several different ones. You know, for your oil pan, uh, like I said, I specifically bought this because it's fuel resistant. 
and because the two cycle mixes the oil with the fuel you're going to have fuel and oil down here so that's it that's how you apply a gasket to a two cycle engine okay so I'd like to mount this engine back in the snapper but I want to make sure I clean it up first so I'm just going to use this wire brush it's a brass they're softer bristles, they're not too aggressive, and I have a variable speed drill. I'm just going to do that. just want to make sure it's sturdy. So now I'm just cleaning up this recoil and what I do is I'll take this silicone WD-40 and you'll see when I pull the rope those claws come out. So I'm going to hold the rope and I'm just going to spray some inside of there. Just like that and then kind of work it. So it's a nice recoil there, smooth. Now I did notice this was frayed at the top of the uh, pull cord here on this recoil. So I just cut an inch off. The rest of the rope is good. Made a knot. So that looks good there. And I'm just going to continue to clean this up. And uh, we'll be ready to put this recoil back on. But first I want to take this coil here and clean it up a little bit. It's a little rusty. So I'm going to get it on the wire wheel, unhook the ground wire, and we'll, we'll clean the rust off of that. Alright, you can just use a business card for the uh, gap between the uh, flywheel here and the nicely cleaned coil. So we'll put our ground wire back in. Cleaned up the screws. Hold it, press it down towards the card, tighten it up. Seems like it's hitting here. Now we can put our recoil back on. Make sure it's grabbing. We have these 10 millimeter bolts we got to put around here. Then we can mount it back into the machine so I can get the belt and everything hooked back up. You can always work on the carburetor later. Sometimes it's a bit easier when it's on the machine because you have something that's mounted. It's not moving around. This thing is moving around everywhere. 
kind of awkward. We have one at the top here. damage that carburetor by setting it, setting it down on that carburetor ball. So guys, thanks for joining me on my journey to reviving this snapper snow blower. I like to go through everything in detail. Because it is an older machine, so but I'm confident it'll last for many, many years. Definitely was neglected in some areas. I think we're good here. So we're going to get the body and we're going to mount this back in. We cleaned up this pulley here that's going to go on the shaft here that back together, get the belt back on there, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, we have our four, actually there's three nuts here and one bolt, 12 millimeter. We're going to go ahead and put the snapper motor back in here. There's a bracket here for here. So we got to make sure we get that in there for the bottom support. The one's a little tricky because it's behind this right here. I got to get that with a wrench. Open end wrench. But I think we can get it started here. Then we have one bolt right here. bottom support. Now this bolt here or the nut was missing so I'm going to have to find something for that. But we can go ahead and put this part in here. If we don't 
lose it. Okay, we'll get the wrenches, tighten that down, and I'm going to have to locate a, preferably a nylock nut for that. Alright, I did find a nylock nut for here. Alright, so it's coming along. I think I'm going to wait on the belt because I do want to take the auger out and do some painting, just some touch up inside. And I want to grease the bearings. So I'm going to get to that um, next at some point. So stick around so we can uh, get this classic snapper working 100%. Alright guys, so we have the snapper all put back together. We put the cover back on and then the on the rear side there's a heavy metal uh, cover that goes on. Not hard to do at all. We touched it all up. It's in good shape. Uh, I did take care of the handle, the cable that was kind of frayed. I just ended up taking some shrink rack tubing, some shrink tubing, um, and just putting some shrink tubing on that small portion. Uh, but good machine, great machine. We're going to start it right up. I guess that's all that's left to do. Now, just as an added note, we have a Toro from about that same era. And these two would have been competitors with each other. And the engines in these are exactly the same. So just as an added note there. So let's go on and get this thing fired up. Alright guys, runs great. So that's it for this little piece of history. I'm going to be definitely keeping this one. Uh, it's a classic commercial grade snowblower. I think it's going to do a great job for the deck and walkways and other things. But I appreciate you guys watching and supporting the channel. And if you want to support monetarily, even if it's just 5 or 10 bucks, you can uh, send Venmo to at FrankieFix716. And uh, hit the like button if you like the video, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.